Welcome to our show this week on the town with Mike Farah. You know, every week we take you to a different charity event and show you the celebrities who are attending that event and do interviews with them. But this week is going to be a little bit different. I'm here in Toluca Lake where a lot of celebrities are attending a collectible show. But these are celebrities from the 50s and 60s and 70s and some of the most recognizable faces on television during that time, during that era. And I'm going to bring them out here one by one and start interviewing so you can recognize those faces and figure out the shows they were on and, even more so, the charities that they've been lending their time and their credibility to. And they'll talk about those charities that they like. So just a couple of seconds, I'll bring out the first celebrity, see if you recognize them, and listen to the charity they're doing some great work for. You know, I'm here with one of the great character actors of all time, but someone I've always admired. Now, the guy you worked with, two of us go back 40 years with him. And uh, if you don't recognize him, he played the owner of the Copa, uh, Uncle Charlie, on Make Room for Daddy, Sid Milton. Now, you talk about a guy who's been around television a long time. Oh, yeah. You, when did you start in television, Sid? Well, actually, I'm trying to remember. I think the very first thing I did was a thing that Lucy did on radio mm -hmm. for TV with Barry Nelson and Joan Caulfield called My Favorite Husband. Okay. I did a few of those. And then we did a series, uh, oh my gosh, you're making me old, you know that. <laughs> well, I'll do an easier one for you. You mean, all you mean. Tell me how you started with Danny Thomas. Well, uh, I was sitting on, on the bench doing a December Bride and Danny walked uh -huh. by and, and I yelled out, I never met him. I said, you're never going to use me, huh? He said, that's right, we're never going to use you, idiot. <laughs> the 10 minutes later, we had a call from Sheldon Leonard's office. They want you to play a nervous pill-taking nightclub owner. I never took any pills in the show. <laughs> right. But we started to go one shot, and I did 130. <laughs> I guess he never used my, you. My best. <laughs> now, you know, the first time I met you, and I'll tell you, I don't. I might go back 40 years with Danny Thomas. What well, said I met about 20 years ago, yeah. and uh, there was a luncheon that Danny used to put on Wilshire Country Club, where they used to sell yeah. tables. When 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 Danny started St. Jude's Hospital, Leukemia Hospital for children with catastrophic diseases, and a lot of the people in the movie industry rallied around Danny to build this hospital. And every luncheon that they put on to sell tickets to the main banquet, that's where I met this guy because he used to make appearances, right. come in, said hello to everybody. And uh, the crowd used to love that because when they look at you and they saw Danny together, it was like being on that set. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Great, great memories. Very nostalgic. And I miss Danny, you know. Mm -hmm. I loved working with him. <clears throat> Excuse me. Danny was my biggest booster. Mm -hmm. and, and great to work with. Beautiful to work with. The top showman. Right. And, you know, Danny owned the many, many shows. Right. <coughs> Van Dyke. I Spy, Goma Pile, I can go on and on, you know. Well, you know, all the spin-offs, I think it was great that we see so much then, not too much anymore, but so much then you've had a great show. Let's take Andy Griffith. Andy Griffith does He owned it. that show, too. He owned that show, and then from the character actors on that show, which made that show. It wasn't yeah. just Andy, it was the character actors around him. Don Knotts was wonderful. You got Don Knotts, and then you got Jim Neighbors, who went on the Gomer yeah. Pyle show. I did and, that, too. And uh, even the... And of course, let's let's talk about even Andy Guthrie's show. Danny was did a uh, still on his show where he was stuck in a southern town, where he meets up with a uh, Andy Griffith, who's the sheriff who arrested him for speeding, yeah. and turns out to be the judge also and every, the mayor, the mayor, everything else. And Danny's stuck in a town, mouthing off to a guy. And uh, from that great show that everyone laughed on, making room for yeah. Danny, the Andy Griffith show was born, and so many other shows after that. Sheldon Leonard was an interesting character, wasn't he? Oh, it? yeah, very, very talented and very much a great believer in me mm. and, and very kind, you know, to, to, uh, easy to work with. Right. And they're talented, very talented man and funny. You know, it's funny, people see him and uh, Sheldon Leonard was a great heavy on the screen. He always yeah. played, he loved playing the gangster, but he really, uh, for uh, the career of the movie industry, was really much more a talented producer. The shows that that oh, he got, yeah. I spot. And a good director. Yeah, I'll never forget the one word he used that he would say, you know, incorrectly. I gave it away uh, when someone says so and so and so and so and so and so, 
Uh, uh, Sheldon would say, that's correct. <laughs> that's correct. <laughs> when you uh, started on Danny Thomas, did you have an idea when you actually went on that show it was going to run the length it did? No, no. Uh, you know, I used to watch that show, believe it or not, how much I loved Danny. Before I met him, and of course, mm -hmm. I you know, joined the show, I used to watch it religiously, loved it. Of course, I saw a great showman, mm -hmm. a great showman. I mean, a very multi-talented guy. He sang very sweet, real great, mm -hmm. real pretty, like his friend Sinatra, you know. You're right. He loved Sinatra, you know, and they were very close and, and admired him and could sing beautifully and a great comedian. And Danny never used one-liners. Right. He used character comedy. Nobody could do it. Nobody. Well, you know, he, uh, with all his talent, he brought a show which was a family show. Yeah. And oh, yeah. Uh, never had a never had to put in the show in a position where it was filthy or anything off color. It was a great family show. And the people he brought, I mean, I think people really enjoyed. Angela Cartwright, who played his his daughter, and uh, Marjorie Lord, his wife, yeah. always was a clean family show. And uh, of course, his life went on to be even. Uh, Danny Thomas went on to have even a greater life because when he built a hospital for children that no one ever had to spend a penny. You didn't have to have money to be treated for catastrophic no, no. diseases. No. What he built in Memphis, Tennessee, will far great exceed. Great worthy cause. You know, and the uh, great, and, and I guess maybe a single of his success and the respect that the movie industry, television industry had for him is the fact that all these great comedians and uh, talent and producers all rallied behind him to help build this hospital. It's a great tribute to him as a man more than anything. And of course, we've got Sid Milton here, and he's a crowd stopper because as the crowd goes by, they're going like this, pointing at him. And even the group that's walking by through this interview keeps looking at him. Sid, it's so great we found you here today. Thank you. And, uh, I'm thank glad you, you did. Uh, I'm listen, glad you did. it's great just reminiscing. We'd like to have you come back and maybe do a little special on Danny's show and some of the other people that appeared, and we'll get some of you together. Okay, okay. buddy? Okay. Thank you, Sid. I'd love to. Thank, thank you, my friend. Wonderful to be here, Mike. You have him right here on On the Town. You know, we've had some of the greatest stars in television, Milton Berle, Bob Hope, Sid, Sid Caesar. But if I was going to go back and say who was America's son, it had to be John Provost, Timmy on Lassie. Well, thank you. Do you realize that every mother looked at you as if this was my own kid? You know, it's true, and it's and I can have met lots of kids throughout my years that said mm -hmm. they would fantasize of being Timmy in that family on the, right. on the ranch. It's, uh, it, I think it's so because Lassie's been so lasting. You realize you're how, how long you've been playing on television? Oh, forever and ever. I mean, um, and Lassie in its different forms right. has been the longest running series. They even did had a Lassie radio program <laughs> and before, the, before the first series. Wait, I mean, so come on. Let's introduce the first star. <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. <laughs> now I'll tell you, how, what age were you when you started? I started uh, in 1957. I was mm -hmm. seven years old mm -hmm. and did the show uh, till 1964. Right, okay. And uh, that, you know, it's kind of interesting. Those who came after you, I think those people who have this indelible uh, look at the show itself still remember you as if you played 15 years on the show. I think so. And, and what's really neat is people that are my age who grew up with Timmy and Lassie, now right. their kids are growing up with uh, Timmy and Lassie again. It's so unbelievable, isn't it? It is. It's great. I mean, who would have known that it would have lasted mm -hmm. and that, uh, well, the kids would watch black and white. Right, right. I, I think the, the appeal of the show, I think, wasn't just the dog, but it was a love story between you and the dog. Well, it was mm -hmm. it was the boy and the dog, and Red Weatherwax, the owner and trainer right. of Lassie, he had a saying, and his saying was, every dog should have a kid and every kid should have a dog. Right, right. You know, it's one of these things, for you, uh, how many dogs did you actually work with? Did you work? I worked, uh, on the seven years, I went through three Lassies. Mm -hmm. um, we did have a stand-in, Lassie had a stand-in and a double dog. But mm -hmm. you only saw maybe you know 10% of the time right. the double. It was always the one Lassie, and Rudd would retire uh, the dogs after two, three years of work because mm -hmm. you know it was stressful on them. Right. But okay. they were all great. Now tell me about your two co-stars on the show, also. Well, Hugh Riley and June Lockhart. Right. And, well, this is a little bit of trivia. Um, that's who people remember as as my parents on the show. But right. when I first started the show, the original. Um, 
uh, Ruth and Paul Martin was Cloris Leachman and a man by the name of John Shepard. Cloris Leachman. Cl well, you got it because after Cloris realized that she had signed a contract for seven years to be baking cookies, right. she said, "No, guys, I want out of this." Right. So. Then um, on the, the second year of the show, they were both replaced by Hugh Riley and June Lockhart. Right. Well, everyone remembers June Lockhart. Oh, sure. Of course, Hugh too, but, but I think June's uh, notoriety kept Well, and, and June, you know, she went from Lassie to Lost in Space to Petticoat Junction. Right. She's just this, the, the mother icon, I think. Right. And I think during that time, it really was, since it was such a family show, people looked at them as family members, not as stars. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So June Lockhart, you could welcome her into your home on the television any time, and you wouldn't think twice about it. Exactly. Right? I mean, the characters were just so genuine right. and, and, and so likable, and everybody loved us. Well, John, what's happening with you now? What are you doing now? What are you looking to do forward? Well, um, I am raising a ten and a half year old daughter and a thirteen year old son and I'm working on an autobiography right now mm -hmm. um, I live up in Northern California and just you know keep them busy does it shock you that when people come into these shows mm -hmm. and they look at you and all of a sudden bang as soon as they see your face and we're talking 40 years later oh yeah they look at your face and they know exactly who you are does you know and shock it, you? <clears throat> it does and it doesn't even have to be at a show like this I mean I can be you know, in the mall or going to the movie and people come and say, excuse me, did you go to high school with my son? And, and yeah. I mean, I, you know, they can't quite place it. Or a lot of times, you know, they'll ask us, well, yeah. what's your name? John Provost. Oh, you were Timmy on last Right. Week. You know, it's funny. We walked through uh, the hall today and we had uh, prearranged a lot of uh, interviews with uh, people who were here. And as soon as they walked up, as soon as I saw your eyes, bang, I knew exactly. <laughs> Hadn't seen you in many years because I knew the weather waxes too, but All right. I never really knew you growing up, although we lived within a short period of each other. But as soon as I saw you, and it's funny, you see someone 40 years later, and I still saw that little boy in your face. Well, And my immediate reaction was, wasn't John, it was Timmy. Right. Well, see, that's why I have the mustache. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, I did grow up. <laughs> you know, you mentioned how many guys today would love to have your look saying without the mustache. <laughs> I can look with you when I look at your age today. This right. is what they're looking to do. It's so funny. Well, and, I, and you're looking to go the opposite with the mustache. Yeah, well, I th it's it's in the family genes. Right. And both my parents are, you know, in their mid-80s and they're going strong. So. Right. You know, whether you want to call him John when you see him, or you slip and yell out Timmy. I don't think he really matters. I answer know? to both. <laughs> you know, just don't call him Lassie. There you, you know? go. <laughs> you're in great shape. All but, right. You know, I'm glad to see you're doing great, and kids are doing great, and you're ready well, thank to you. spending that time. And uh, we should see you more often on, really, on the camera. Well, like I said, we're working on a few things, but uh, you know how that is. It's yeah. not. It's not done till it's done. It's Hollywood, guys. That's it. But right now, you mm -hmm. see him on the dial with Mike Farah, and uh, we'll visit with you again. Thanks, Mike. Thank you, buddy. Been a pleasure. All right, Tim, and John. <laughs> He did that on purpose. Well, in our search to find some of the most <laughs> recognizable faces on television, Lee Aker. Mike, Man. it's uh, great to be here. I don't know if people recognize me anymore, but well, about... Tell them, tell them who you are, and then they're going to go, I, I was Corporal it. Rusty in the Rin Tin Tin series from ABC from 1954. Right. I'm eight, dating myself. 54. 54 to 60, and then CBS from 60 to about 68, and then Disney Channel from about uh, 80 to about 84. Man, that is, you realize how long you're talking? You're talking 30 years with that series? Uh, yeah, well, it's still, you know, I hopefully they'll come back on the air sometime soon, you know, because... Uh, Are you playing the general in the new one? <laughs> <laughs> you, I hope they gave you, I hope you got a, a promotion from Corporal. You know, I kind of fell into that Corporal, you know. I was honorary Corporal Rusty. Right, of Because the first episode, I saved a colonel's life. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember, that was the first episode, I think it was I was September. three years old when this started.